Hola amigos, ¿qué tal? Stuart here from Spain Speaks with an update video today. We'll go through some of the main newspapers in the country, check out what is happening in the press today here in Spain. We'll have a look at El Mundo, El País, El Confidencial, RTVE, the state broadcaster. And then at the end of the video, we'll go into the comment section and check out what is happening there. There's going to be lots of news today about the state of alarm, which, as we know, is coming to an end on the 9th of May, a few days away. The state of alarm, state of emergency, if you like and various autonomous communities are starting to announce what Spain is going to look like after that date. For example, Madrid has come out today and said what they're planning to do. Andalusia has also given a hint at what is going to happen down there. So various places around the country are starting to tell us what is going to be the norm after the 9th of May. So let's get straight into the news and we'll start off here with El Mundo and we'll have a look at this article here about the AstraZeneca vaccine. So we'll click on that one and the headline reads that the autonomous communities are asking the central government to be able to use AstraZeneca on people under the age of 60 because apparently there are thousands of vaccines that aren't being used. Various politicians around the country have said that they have thousands of doses in the fridge because they're not able to vaccinate a lot of people with this vaccine anymore. So there we go. AstraZeneca AstraZeneca is still making headlines. The autonomous communities here in Spain asking the central government to be able to use that vaccine on people under the age of 60 because the objective now is to get as many people vaccinated as possible before those summer months because in the months of July and August things are going to start to get complicated when people are away on holidays. And as we saw there, thousands of doses of AstraZeneca sitting in fridges around the country not being used. Now we'll go back into the newspaper. We'll click on this article here about what Madrid plans to do after the 9th of May. And the headline reads that Madrid is going to extend the opening hours for bars and restaurants until 12 midnight. These establishments won't be able to receive new clients after 11 p.m. and they're going to maintain the limit of four people per table inside and six people on outdoor seating areas and nobody is allowed to stand at the bar. So there we go, Madrid announcing what they are going to do after the 9th of May, extending that timetable for bars and restaurants, now being able to open until 12 midnight. I think it was 11 p.m. before, not really sure sure on that. I think 11 p.m. was the cutoff time because of the curfew, but I think I also read before that Madrid is planning on getting rid of the curfew, and maybe we'll see some news about that in an upcoming article. Now we'll go back into the news, and there's an article here about the new toll system that the government is planning to put on roads all around the country in 2024. We'll click on that one, and the headline reads that the government's planned tolls have set off alarms amongst the transport sector, and they're saying that it will make the price of foodstuffs more expensive. The transport sector and motorists are critical about this new idea, and the government has released some information that the price is going to be one cent per kilometre. So the new tolls that the government is planning to put on roads around the country in 2024, not popular with motorists, not popular with the transport sector, and they are saying that the price of goods, the price of food, is going to increase if this toll comes into play. And the price there, as leaked by the government, one cent per kilometre travelled. So a fairly unpopular measure I think this one is going to be because as I said yesterday, people in Spain do not like having to pay for roads. There are some parts of the country where you have to pay more than others. For example, in Catalonia, you have to pay a lot for roads. In the Basque country, you also have to pay a lot for roads. But in the rest of the country, you can travel relatively toll free. For example, if you drive from Madrid to Portugal, you don't pay a thing. It's completely free until you hit the Portuguese border. And then bang, as soon as you cross the border into Portugal, you get slapped with tolls basically everywhere you go. So maybe that Portuguese model is the one that the government is going to copy here in 2024. We'll wait and see. Now we'll leave El Mundo there and we'll go to El Pais and we can see the main article there on the left that Madrid is going to get rid of the curfew as of the 9th of May and as we saw before bars and restaurants will be able to close at 12 midnight. So some good news there, no more curfews and I imagine that there are going to be no mobility restrictions also because as we know Madrid hasn't really had any mobility restrictions in place. The borders have been open, the problems have been with other autonomous communities so for example we haven't been able to travel to neighboring autonomous communities like Castilla-La Mancha. So we are starting to get some of our rights back here in Spain. Good news. Now we'll have a look at this article here on the right about the Madrid elections. We'll click on that one. And the headline reads, Ayuso's Red Belt, From the Desire of Freedom to the Fear of Pablo Iglesias. 
Neighbours from the towns of Fuenlabrada and Pala explain the electoral swing to the right and why the PP is now dominating these areas which are traditionally socialist strongholds. And that was one of the main characteristics of the elections held last Tuesday, the ability of the Partido Popular to win in areas like this one, what they have traditionally called here in Madrid the Red Belt. Now they're calling it, as we can see, a Yuso's Red Belt because she has been able to change the trend and get people that traditionally voted for the Socialist Party to vote for her. And as we saw there, people were afraid of Pablo Iglesias and some of his more radical politics. So the Partido Popular here in Madrid, thanks to Ms. Ayuso, now dominating the whole of the Madrid community, basically. And there's an article here related to that crushing victory of the PP here in Madrid, and it is that the Prime Minister Pedro Sanchez assures that there won't be early elections. So the Prime Minister there saying that he's not going to call early elections. There was a little bit of speculation that that might be the case, that Sanchez calls early elections, given the smashing that they received in the Madrid elections. But socialist politicians have been working overtime in recent days, trying to tell the population that the Madrid elections were an anomaly, that that is not the general sentiment around the country. There is not a general swing to the right, as experienced here in Madrid, and Pedro Sánchez confident that he can hold on until 2023 without having to call early elections. Now we'll leave El País there, go to El Confidencial, and we'll have a look at the vaccination campaign, see if there has been any progress in recent days. We can see that 12.01% of the population have now completed their vaccinations. We'll have a look at some of the autonomous communities, starting with Andalusia, they're up to 11.7%. The Balearics, 9.09%. Catalonia, 11.94%. The Valencian community, 11.35%. And Madrid, 9.76%. So things moving slowly in the Madrid community, maybe because of the elections and the public holidays that we have had recently. Now we'll check out some of the news in El Confidencial. We'll have a look at this article here about Podemos and who is going to succeed Pablo Iglesias. So we'll click on that one. And the headline reads that Irene Montero will join with Ione Belarra in the control of Podemos post Pablo Iglesias. And if you don't know who Irene Montero is, she is the partner of Pablo Iglesias. So he resigns and his partner takes control of Podemos, but she's going to take joint control of the party with another person. Now we'll leave El Confidencial there, we'll go to RTVE, the state broadcaster, check out what is happening there. And we can see the main story on the right that the state broadcaster is going with there, El Efecto Ayuso, the Ayuso effect, how the right is again dominating Madrid. And we'll have a look at this article here about Andalusia and what they're going to do when the state of alarm comes to an end. And we can see that Andalusia is also going to remove the curfew and they're also going to open bars and restaurants until midnight and discotheques or nightclubs until 2 a.m. The Andalusian border controls will also be removed, and they're also going to remove the limits on how many people can get together in people's homes. So Viva La Fiesta in Andalusia, hostelry is going to be able to stay open until 12 midnight, and clubs will be able to stay open until 2 a.m. So nightlife returning to Andalusia. Now we'll leave the news there and go into the comment section, check out what is happening there today. We'll have a look at this one here from Philip. Hi Stuart, only recently came across your vlog and have been really enjoying it. Credit to you for doing it every day. I'm curious to know how long it takes you to do it every day. You clearly have to do your research first, then the vlog, and there is editing required afterwards, so I'm sure it takes up a fair bit of time every day. I guess, though, after 418 days, you've got very efficient. Keep up the good work, but hopefully, like all of us, you'll get back to the day job very soon. Yeah, Philip, thanks for the comment. And you're right, these vlogs do take up a fair bit of time every day, around three or four hours, depending on the material. First, you have the research, as you mentioned, then you have to record, and then, of course, you have to edit, which is the worst part. But as I said, around three to four hours a day. And I normally do it in the morning to get it out of the way quickly so that I can dedicate the rest of my day to doing other things. For example, my English classes, which I still give, and organizing some other things that I do for a living. But I am planning to continue recording these vlogs even when things get back to normal, whenever that is going to be. I plan to put out a few videos every week, maybe not one every day, but at least three or four, I think, to keep people up to date on what is happening in this country, because I know that there are people interested and they like to see what is going on in this country. I'll do more driving vlogs, I'll do more travel vlogs. When the country opens up again, hopefully as of next week, as I said, the country is going to open up again, so I should be able to travel to different places around the country. So that's going to be the plan, news vlogs, travel vlogs, basic information about Spain, and if people keep watching the videos, 
I will keep producing them. One here from Bill. Catalonia is going the other way. Road tolls we've had for years are ending in September this year. It's great. About time the rest of Spain paid some road tolls instead. Yeah, Bill, thanks for the comment. I mentioned that earlier that Catalonia is one of the areas of Spain that has had toll roads for a long period of time. I think Catalonia and the Basque Country have had toll roads more than in other places. And I think one of the reasons for that is that they wanted to develop the road system in those autonomous communities quicker than in other parts of the country. And the only way to do that was to get the private sector to pay for it, hence the toll roads. Here in Madrid, as I said, the majority of roads are free. There were some toll roads introduced a few years back, but they weren't successful. People didn't like to use them, but unfortunately it seems we're just going to have to get used to toll roads here in Spain in the future. And I'm not sure what's going to happen in Catalonia because as far as I understand, they're talking about imposing these tolls on roads all around the country, Catalonia included. But I could be wrong. And finally one here from Gusto Audio, not t-shirt weather, you must be a friolero. Yeah Gusto, thanks for the comment, obviously referring to the fact that I was sitting in the garden yesterday wearing a hoodie, I wasn't wearing a t-shirt, because it wasn't really that hot when I recorded the video, it was only about 18 or 19 degrees, but today is a different story, it's about 23 or 24 currently, and as you can see, I have a short sleeve shirt on, but I do have a t-shirt underneath, and to be honest, I am a bit of a friolero. I feel the cold, and that is probably because I spent the first 30 years of my life living in Perth, Western Australia, where the weather is absolutely fantastic the majority of the year. So when I come to a place like Madrid that has very changing temperatures, it can be cold one day, warm the next, I prefer to leave a jacket or some type of jumper on just in case. But I am, as you mentioned there, a little bit friolero. On that note, I'll start to wrap the video up. Questions and comments, please leave them in the section below. Debate the video out as you normally do. Give the video a thumbs up if you liked it, thumbs down if you didn't. I'll see you in the next one. Hasta luego.